Hey everybody, welcome back to C2 Tactical in Scottsdale. Today on Active Self Protection Extra, I wanna talk about push-pull technique and why we teach it and why it's so important when you're running a shotgun. So I think push-pull technique with any long gun is really important. It is critically important when we're running a shotgun. The one problem, they're the biggest problem that people have shooting shotguns, particularly a 12 gauge like this LTT Elite 1301, is that it has stout recoil, right? Second thing, of course, is that keeping the gun stocked and stoked and make sure that it's got enough rounds in it. But, I mean, from the beginning, 12 gauge recoil is stout. You're pushing out an ounce or more of shot sometimes, you know, an ounce and three quarters and up to, you can put out a lot of shot and that, that Newton's law says you're gonna have an equal force in the opposite direction. And so, you know, it, it's a stout recoil and the way that we fight that is what we call push-pull. Now, I am not the originator of this by any stretch. I learned it from Matt Hot, who was certainly taught it by his dad, Rob Hot. And uh, the best shotgun instructors in the country absolutely do it this way. I know that Tim Chandler and Ashton Ray from 360 Performance taught it this way to my son when they were in Virginia when he taught, uh, took class with them. So this is kind of the way it, once you get uh, used to the kind of the basics of shotgun. And, and what we really think about push-pull is that you're pulling the gun apart. So rather than snugging the gun into yourself, a lot of times what you see people do, as I'm gonna face down range here, is they pull the gun into themselves in the thought that you don't want the gun to bang into your shoulder. Well, what that does is, is you're pulling to the rear. When you get a push to the rear from the gun, it really pushes you to the rear. But instead, what I wanna think about is drawing a bow and arrow. So when I draw a bow and arrow, I am pulling back with my dominant hand, but I'm pushing forward with my non-dominant hand. And the reason I'm pushing forward is to keep that bow. If I try to snug it, of course, I won't be able to pull that bow back to me. But I, what I really want is I wanna push, is, is in order to get a good bow draw, what I'm really doing is pushing with my non-dominant hand and keeping that gun out there and then pulling back just enough to get the bow string back to me. And that's what I really wanna do with my shotgun. Now, what is that really gonna do? If we think about a shotgun that is, you know, we are are properly set right so we're not bladed off like this we're not doing duck hunting or whatever we're properly bladed this way if I am taking all of the recoil in my shoulder pad then what has to happen here is the gun pushes me backwards this way so then that force travels down my spine into my hips from my hips into my feet from my feet into the ground the force has to go into the earth eventually so that's the path that it goes it goes back this way then it has to kind of make a turn and go back to my my hips then make another turn and go back down my legs and that causes a lot of muzzle rise now if instead i'm pro practicing proper push pull so i have got a big strong firm grip with this forward hand and i'm pushing forward with it then an awful lot of the recoil actually comes through this forward hand because i'm pushing as hard as i can and just pulling enough to keep it on my shoulder so so a lot of recoil coil here is going to come through. Now, I don't want to lock this elbow out because this is going to act as a shock absorber, first of all, and give more time for it to come through my front shoulder. So then instead of coming through my rear shoulder here, that it has to make turns, it goes through my forearm, a shock absorber here at my elbow, in my front shoulder, and then straight down through my hip and into my front foot, and then at still an angle into my back foot. So all that to say, it has to make less turns, which is going to create less muzzle rise. So what push-pull really ends up doing at the end of the day is keeping your muzzle much flatter, and I'll show you what the differences look like. First one, I'm gonna do no push-pull. So what I want you to watch is, I'm gonna snug this shotgun into me in a classic traditional sense, and I'm gonna pull that gun in, and I'm just gonna shoot one round because I want you to see kind of what the difference is. Now again, a 1301 is a pretty soft shooting shotgun. So it's probably gonna be a little bit less, and I am also not a wee man, right? I am not Zacchaeus, I am not a wee little man. Uh, I am a big dude, so uh, I, I can handle recoil pretty well. But the principle applies all the way through. I'm not gonna play games with this, I am not trying to give you a hard time with this, I am just trying to show you what the realities are here, okay? So again, here we go, we've got that. So right now, I'm gonna pull into myself and really snug this shotgun into me. And what I really want you watching is the muzzle rise. Just watch what the muzzle does here. So I'm pulling in, and you saw that muzzle come up and then settle back down, right? It's not too shabby. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a similar thing, but instead of pulling with this front hand, I'm gonna push. So now I'm thinking again, pull the shotgun apart. I'm really thinking like a bow here and pushing with this front hand and pulling with my rear hand, but I'm not focusing on the pull with my rear hand because I have to manipulate the trigger. 
trigger. I'm focusing on the push with my front hand. And when I do that, and I really am thinking, it's my front hand that has the shotgun and my rear hand just pulls it back here. And I really function on there. You see how uh, little I had a, a pull there? Yes, I did get a light. I don't care, that's great. That's actually a feature, friends. But what I want you to see there is how little recoil and how little muzzle rise I got out of it. So again, now what we really have here is I'm just going to focus on a good push pull, right? So all I'm going to do is just focus here. Again, we're just at five yards because I'm shooting birdshot and I, I don't care. I'm, I'm really not watching the pattern much because again, I'm, I'm just shooting birdshot at five yards just to function the shotgun, okay? So again, I'm pushing, I'm pushing really hard here. So I've got that, I'm getting, and I can get shots on target really fast if I'm properly push pulling the shotgun. So. I would just encourage you, you can work on this in your dry fire as well, what you don't want to see. So again, now I have an empty shotgun. Uh, but in your dry fire, <coughs> what I don't want to see is, is this push and, and real push down. What I really want to see instead <coughs> is I get the gun up and I bang and the gun stays nice and steady because I'm getting that push from my front hand. You can work on that in dry fire, really think about that bow pulling like this, push a lot with that front hand and then when you go to the range, you'll get better results, I promise.